Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Today's tip and trick video is going to go over how I use uh, masking tape to mask a painting. And I do have another video that talks about uh, using masking tape, but I was asked how I would mask something where it is a, a very detailed mask that I am doing. And so I am going to uh, talk for a few minutes and then I will speed up a big section of this, but I wanted to basically give you an idea of how I would do a more detailed uh, mask. And this picture is of a house finch and uh, the house finch has some snow on its beak and then I added some snow to the head of the bird and I added some snow on the branches and a couple places here and a little bit down in through here so that it would look a little more snowy and I'm also going to use masking fluid to spritz some mask on here so that it will feel like it's actually snowing as well. So you can see on this image that the pine needles in this area are very lit by sun and uh, the background is more blurred. The branches are softer edged back in here but I can adjust those later so for now they're going to go in as hard edged uh, uh, masked areas and then I will adjust them later in the painting. And so that you can see my drawing, I have basically everything drawn in here and then where the blue is, that's where uh, the snow is in the scene. And uh, I was going back and forth in how I wanted to mask this and at first I thought, well, maybe I'll just use masking fluid over uh, the snow areas and then paint around the other things but then as I was thinking about it where these pine needles are coming out into uh, the dark background I would want to protect those as well so that when I go to do the background which I will do first I don't have to think about painting around them and all of these little openings in between the pine needles those are places where if I can have them masked and can do the background and don't have to think about it then it makes it uh, easier when I'm painting. So because uh, all of those things I want to protect I am going to use uh, masking tape rather than putting masking fluid all over uh, my painting. So I am starting with my two inch wide masking tape and the other video does talk about what uh, brand of masking tape I use uh, and I will link that video down below and basically when I start a very detailed scene because this one has pieces in the foreground all over the whole painting actually that need to be masked I'm just going to start laying pieces down and cutting um, and sometimes I will only mask around one part of the image so on some images I may only mask the bird or I may mask some other part but not necessarily um, as much as I will be masking in this one. So now what I'm going to be looking for are places where I basically will be cutting around my main objects and so I know there's an opening, in fact I will move this down so that you can see and actually I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see where I'm cutting I'm going to uh, recenter my board there and I hope you can see that you can still see my pencil line uh, through the tape and that's why I like the tan tape and not painters tape and other kinds of tape for this. And when you're learning to use a blade and the masking tape it 
can be a little bit before you are comfortable doing more detailed shapes. So generally uh, a good thing to do is to practice on a piece of paper off to the side, make sure you understand the pressure that you need to give the blade, and you want to make sure that you are using a, a sharp blade. So when I start uh, a new mask project where I'm using a blade, then I will uh, bring out a new blade and uh, make sure that it's sharp. Because if it's not sharp, then you end up pressing too hard and you can actually cut through your watercolor paper or you can groove it so that when you're painting, those grooves will um, pull at the paint and you end up with these uh, dark lines around objects if you have grooved your, your uh, paper. So uh, it's a really good idea, and I can't quite tell if I've got that corner cut. It's a good idea to start uh, with a fresh blade when you're going to do this. So I am giving very little pressure because the blade is sharp, I want it to just cut the masking tape. All right, and then there's a branch right here. And where the pine needles are in the background, that is going to be uh, part of the background for me. So I am not going to protect those, even though they are lighter than this dark area right here and some of the shapes that are in the background I don't have in my image. And it can help when you're doing uh, masking tape uh, and trying to see your line. Sometimes it helps to uh, turn your board or change where your light is so that you're uh, seeing where uh, you're cutting because it can be if your hand gets in the way <clears throat> Excuse me, if your hand gets in the way, um, it can be a little hard to see your, your line. And it does help a little bit to lay it on the blade over on, at an angle sometimes to be able to tell where I'm cutting. And then this whole piece... Whoops. Oh, yep, that's good. Well, it's a little... So my blade is sharp, but because I am pressing very little right now, trying to be careful, sometimes I don't quite get it cut completely through. And it's actually, I think, better to have to go back over some area than to press too hard. Okay. And then I do uh, just make sure by just pressing the edges that I have sealed it well to the paper because I want to make sure that it's, the paint is not going to seep under it. And right in here you can see where this is the branch and then this is the top of the bird's head. So where I can connect pieces of tape uh, because this was laying in there then I will just continue cutting shapes. So I don't go and cut uh, just the branch. I go ahead and, and let all the pieces that I'm going to protect sort of uh, blend together and become one big area. And I'll do one more strip here in just a second so you can see how when I am working down an area with the tape how I work with it because I do not uh, lay out all the tape and then cut. I want to cut each individual piece and then lay the next strip down because I want to um, overlap the pieces about an eighth of an inch and if you uh, lay down the strips and then try to cut through them and uh, it's just it seems easier to go ahead and cut each strip rather than having to cut through an area because sometimes they don't all lay out as nicely as they do on this painting and uh, you might end up placing two or three strips of tape over an area to get it the area covered and um, having to cut through all of that is just 
hard to do and it's just easier to do one at a time to be able to see your lines. Okay, get around that. So I am going to uh, video parts of this painting to, to uh, use as some of my tip and trick videos uh, this month because it's a snow scene and uh, if it comes out well I will use it for our Christmas cards so I have a, a double purpose for this painting and right now I'm up around some of the pine needles that are up off of the uh, back of the bird so it's going to look kind of funny with that sticking up off of the bird but it will make sense in the end. Okay. Got all that. And last couple pieces on this strip. Now I would not leave um, masking tape on your paper uh, if it's going to be in a hot room or a hot car and also uh, I've left it on for about a month without any issues, but you might want to test your particular brand of paper. This is Arches, and I've also used it with Fabriano and not had an issue. If you're using student grade uh, paper, I would definitely test it because I do know that the tape can rip uh, some student grade paper because the student grade paper is made a lot of it with um, wood pulp and that does not handle uh, the masking tape well. It will actually tear the paper. Okay, so I have that first strip cut and now I'm going to, and sometimes I'll lay those strips on an angle but it's just working for this painting for it to be straight. I'm going to pull off another piece. And I'm going to overlap, like I said, about an eighth of an inch. Sometimes it's a little more. And then I just really am pressing the edges down. If I know an edge is a piece of the um, tape that I've just placed on there is not going to, like if there were a big place in here that I was going to be cutting off, I may only press uh, right around the edge of where I'll be cutting it and leave the other part uh, kind of loose on the watercolor paper because then it's just easier to pull off. And I will probably have to change my blade at some point during this process because uh, I just want to make sure that it's going to be sharp the whole way through. And then there is a piece right here. Now if there is a little piece, like maybe there's a pine needle that would come over just a touch into this tape, I might actually leave that off and then just make sure that I'm overlapping enough next time that I can cover that piece next time. Got that, and I think I cut through there. Yes. Right. And I missed uh, right here, I actually cut a little wide. So I'm going to see if I can come back in through there. And if I uh, cut a piece and I cut it a little short or I don't get the shape exactly as I want it, then I can just come in with a little bit of masking fluid and fill in wherever I need to in order to make uh, that area look right. And I'll just cut just a touch more on this one and then I'm going to go ahead and speed up the rest so that you can see how I do it but so that the video doesn't take a long time because this can take a while to uh, cut through all of the different uh, patterns especially on this one because of all the pine needles. So I hope this was interesting and uh, I will 
uh, kind of walk you through some of the parts of this painting uh, this month if uh, everything goes right and talk a little bit about uh, doing snow and uh, I will see you in the next one and if you want to see the final um, part of this painting masked you can fast forward if you'd like or you can watch as I um, cut through all the different layers and uh, reveal the masked area as I go. So uh, I hope this was helpful and if you have a watercolor tip trick or technique that you would like to see please leave a comment below and I'll see if I can uh, fit that uh, question into my list of videos to do in the future. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye.